Okay. Recording now as well. Hello, welcome everybody. And let's just give a few more people a chance to join us. Um, let's let's see if you can uh, hear me clearly. Yep, I'm hearing you okay. Yep, okay, thank you. And we are live on Facebook as well, so that's all cool. <laughs> so no swearing, Keith. Um, see who else joins us. So, how is everybody? Uh, who'd like to speak first? Um, Dave, so do you want to start? <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. As in Dave Morris or Dave Holloway? Oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> either one. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of being a kid growing up in the pub down the road. There used to be about 12 of us hang out together and five of us were called Dave. <laughs> it was very confusing. How am I? I'm, uh, I'm very well, thank you. I'm probably slightly sunburned. I've been in the garden all day. Um, uh, it is very nice out there. It's absolutely superb out there. Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. I've, I've connected with a really uh, good golfing uh, support group who are doing loads of coaching online, um, setting loads of challenges and targets and stuff like that just to keep you occupied. So that's going, yeah, that's going well, and I'm playing my way through Star Wars at the moment. Yes, I watched the first one yesterday. So, so I actually watched it in the correct order this time as well. So I started right at the beginning rather than at episode three. So I've done one, two, three. Four. Then you've yeah. got to do solo. Then yeah. you've got to do Rogue One, and then yeah. you can do the next six. So yeah, yeah it, it's I'm, I've done the first five. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very well. Yeah. yeah, I have to admit that the first one looked better doing it this way around. Yeah. <laughs> watching episode four first. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Suzanne, welcome. Uh, how are you? Um, let, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, went really well. Um, yeah, had a good week. Um, what have I done? I, do you know what? I've not. I up until this week, I've been doing lots of things on my house, gardening and things. Then this week, I've just had a nice week. Actually, I've been reading, drawing. Um, yeah, just taking it a bit easy, which was lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, all good. What's John doing there? Oh, is that Buddy coming out of the tree? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy's coming in off his island. Yeah. He looks like James Bond. <laughs> Don't say that. James <laughs> Bond <laughs> coming out of his station. Buddy Bond. Buddy Bond. Buddy Bond. <laughs> Sorry, hi. Hello. Hi, how are you? Sorry, Zoe. Hiya, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hiya. I'm all right, thank you. I can't see you, you've disappeared. We can see you. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm on my iPhone, so I can only see one picture at a time. I can't see like everybody who's on the call. I can only see you who I'm speaking to. So, yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been okay this week, quiet. Uh, Dave, can you just take over for a moment? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Zoe, carry on. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so um, fairly quiet week as far as doing anything goes. Um, just um, sort of going on what I feel really, taking it easy, um, going for walks, um, being with the children. My kids have been really good, yeah, so they've been really, uh, done a few things together, which is which is really nice, so yes, yeah, so that's mostly what this week's been up to. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, Keith, you've been sitting there very patiently, because I think you were probably the first on the, on, on the call anyway. <laughs> how are you and how are things? Um, I'm okay, I'm good. Um, been stirred up quite a bit this week, because I've got a meeting on Monday, to discuss whether I've got a job or not. Um, so, yeah, so a lot's come up over that and what I want to do, do I want the job or... Because the reasons that they, they, they want to talk to me is quite petty and I'm just thinking, oh, I need to grow up and stop being kids. But that's my opinion. Um, so you, apparently you're not allowed an opinion because it upsets people. So, um, 
yeah, so I'm just deciding what I want to do now. So, yeah, a lot coming up there at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm okay, all good. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, just to let everybody know, we are on Facebook, but we're on my personal timeline, apparently, rather than the Sanjay Shah, which is all that I'm right. <laughs> so, <laughs> That was the message I was getting. <laughs> <laughs> So there'll be a lot of surprise viewers, maybe, uh, <laughs> on here. <laughs> Not expecting that. Uh, and uh, uh, who's next? Uh, it's uh, Selena. What? I was just. Sorry. I was yeah. just saying hello to all the newbies. That you know, it wasn't attracting attention or anything like that. But as I'm here, yeah, I've. I've um, a little bit like Keith, really. There's been a little bit of pettiness to do with work where I was asking for things to be written down in black and white so I knew where I stood and the reply was a little bit childish. Um, so I was kind of left me thinking, do I actually really want to work for that place when everything starts coming back together again? You know? Um, so yeah, a little bit up and down this week, really, for me. Okay. So I've been out with the dog and that's cleared my head. Okay, great. So we, we can come back to that as well. Thank you for sharing. And I'm gonna go over to somebody that I haven't seen for a while. And you, I would like to introduce you to Susan. Good afternoon. Would you like to say hello to people? And I'll let you introduce yourself because I don't think anybody here has met you. I think I've met Keith before and Zoe. Okay, right. <laughs> I am Susan. Up, I'm up in Scotland in Kinross. Uh, quite a while ago, I used to come down and help Sanji on his courses. Stir people up. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Very quiet person. So those of you that have heard me describe <laughs> the amazing energy worker that I work with in Scotland, this is Susan who did all of that with me oh, quite a while back for many years. And uh, uh, we had a lot of fun <laughs> doing that. And I learned loads and loads about uh, energy that I'm now sharing uh, with all of you as well. So uh, really good to see you, Susan. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and how are you feeling uh, around all of uh, what's happening? Uh, uh, so we've uh, had another three weeks of lockdown, I guess, uh, minimum. and. Uh, uh, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I think it's a, a great opportunity to get back to self. Um, I think it's one of the scariest things that people are finding right now is to actually be with themselves and, you know, lose an identity against, you know, I'm work, I'm this, I'm that. Um, I'm using the time for meditation, for self-healing. Um, we're very fortunate. Um, I live in a very quiet place so we can go out for walks without meeting lots of people or or whatever and I suppose maybe if we were in London you know or a bigger place then maybe the fear mode would be bigger um, for the corona but you know we go to the supermarket we're, we're very kind to each other we We've started up, there's a lot of kindness groups started up and I think it's opened up an awful lot of hearts which a lot of good's coming out of it. That may sound strange but I just think it's a wonderful time for change. It is certainly an invitation for that and uh, I think many of us are already experiencing that at uh, different levels and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have some people sharing that on here. Let me just welcome a few other people. Uh, Natalie, hi, uh, Buddy and Julia, all of you. Welcome. Who wants to uh, say something? Uh, out of you three, if anybody. <laughs> oh, Buddy, your hand's gone up first. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, good afternoon, everyone. It's um, It's been a wonderful time, I think. It's been really good. It's been great, particularly for setting up <clears throat> a routine. I mean, my routine hasn't changed much from before COVID to this one. 
But for some reason, I've, I'm finding it a good time to actually set something up, like up in the morning, do a set number of things, useful things. And that just sets the day because setting, starting off in a good way in the morning just knocks everything else into place. So I think it's, it's really good. And I, I hope that other people have felt the same way in terms of setting some kind of routine to the day. That's all really. Yep. Thank you. And uh, Dave, I'll come over to you now, Dave Holloway, uh, since uh, you are also uh, co-hosting and uh, then John as well. Where are you uh, at? Uh, what would you like to say? Um, I'm, where am I at? Um, I'm from in your uh, formula. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recovering from a few bumps and scrapes as well. Um, so yeah, physically I've been <laughs> <I'm> better. <laughs> um mentally i'm okay um i was just thinking actually it's you mentioned you know it looks like at least another three weeks of lockdown people talking about how they're getting on with things and what buddy was just saying um i wonder when um, we i think susan said about you know do you get back to normal and, and or do you do you actually decide that you'd like to be living the way you are now which isn't the way you were prior to all this and i just wondered at what point anything becomes normal so if, if after another three weeks of the lockdown, is that then the normal and becomes the norm? And at that point, then you're already in, in the normal and therefore to go back to things the way they were is to change again. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued as to when, when anything becomes normal. And it seems quite obvious that generally as, 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 as a species, humans don't like change. So there's always that resistance and because something's now different, invariably things that are different are never good to start with in, in most people's opinion and then they start to realize maybe they are more beneficial or there is, is some good in it but I, yeah i'd like to know at what point anything becomes normal or what normal is even is there such a thing as normal but that's just where i am at the moment <laughs> thank you and uh, i'm tempted to give a very short answer but uh, it might sound a bit clear it's uh, when you decide i guess <laughs> <laughs> and John, welcome. Uh, so, I've never thought, thought of Dave and Normal in the same sentence, I have to say. <laughs> this is a mutually exclusive. Um, My middle name. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> um, yeah, I've said before that, that um, as humans, we seem to. Um, take a great deal of comfort in routines um most of us will have pretty much the same routine every morning go downstairs have breakfast etc etc and, and what you said was right that, that you know uh, we don't like change because that routine gives us the illusion of control and then something like this comes along and bang you you, you really are faced with, with uh, the fact that, you know really accepting that you have no control and then what happens over a period of time is just some of the old habits die and some new ones come in, but it, but it's still coming from, from the same perspective, which is, is uh, that gives us the illusion of control because it's the same thing happening every day. Um, be interesting to see what happens when, when and if this, this ever eventually comes to an end. Uh, I guess that to a certain extent, we'll probably all just form new habits or maybe go back to the old ones. Um, one of the things that did occur to me was we, we um, spend a quite a lot of time working our way to, 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 uh, to um, focusing on you know, what we call the below the line emotions, anger, fear, uh, greed, lust, all of those things. But we fail to give ourselves credit for the fact that there's the whole other side to the, to the human human nature and the human spirit um, which is within everybody the only reason why we can access them is because they exist within us and you see at the moment huge amounts of courage and kindness um, and all of us are feeling gratitude and you know, missing the things that we took for granted um, and it's not just something that exists within any specific community it, it's you know it's part of human nature it's part of human spirit that we have those things within us 
And the beautiful thing that's happening at the moment is, is that a lot of those things are coming to the fore. And again, it doesn't matter which, which you know, where you live, which, which race, creed, colour, etc. Um, and, and uh, you know, obviously, long may that continue. Um, so that that was the other thing that occurred to me this week. So today, I'm in a good place. Thursday, maybe not so good. <laughs> but today, everything is like it's like God or God or nature. Of you want to say, so yes, I'm going to give you the virus, but I'm just going to give you some fabulous weather to go along with it. Um, and that's life. You know, uh, life is beautiful and life life is terrible. It's it's like that all the time. We we just it's brought me into focus at the moment. So. I'll shut up now. Thank you. And uh, Julia, do you want to uh, share anything? Where, where are you at this week? And uh, how is life uh, for you? Um, where am I at? I mean, I'm, I feel pretty much the same as I have the whole way through this. I'm enjoying the time. I probably, if, if anything is going to get to me, it is that sense of Groundhog Day, which some days you just think, oh crap, what am I going to do today? <laughs> um, but invariably, I guess having two young children around you don't sit like that for very long because they seem, you know, get something going on. But generally, quite, quite fine actually, still quite happy, quite kind of, at ease with everything that's going on, can't control it. Um, have definitely started to pick and choose who I spend my time with, because some people are very um, negative at this point. And I just find that a bit, I can't talk to people who just seem to be looking for the bad stories all the time. Um, so I definitely have noticed that there are some of my friends that I haven't been speaking to as much. Um, but then with other friends, I speak to them every day and actually we've got quiz nights going, we've got dinner parties, Zoom dinner parties happening and also we've, it's actually <laughs> quite a lot of fun actually. The children have been having virtual play dates with their friends. Um, yeah. You know, it's a new way of uh, it's a new way of being. That's for sure. So, uh, again, kind of just listening to uh, the people that have shared, uh, my sense is, on the whole, uh, people are doing uh, okay compared to stories you hear of uh, uh, people elsewhere that perhaps aren't uh, doing so well. What would you, if there was something that uh, we could kind of uh, discuss? Uh, in the, the time that we have here. Is there anything that uh, anyone would particularly like to bring up? Something that you would like an answer to or something that you would like to uh, discuss or share with anybody else uh, so that uh, uh, we can give some context to this conversation uh, as well today. Uh, Dave Morris, uh, so... Yeah. One muted. Yeah. <coughs> So I had um, a buddy call last week and on that buddy call we discussed, if you remember from EM, the you and how uh, apathy and peace are sitting opposite each other. And we kind of explored and talked about, are we okay with this because we're in peace or are we okay with this because we're being apathetic? I'd like to explore that okay so um let me put it out to uh, everybody else where do you feel you're at and what do you think is the difference between those two states uh, in the way that you notice uh, so uh, should we just have a quick uh, round robin and uh, uh, dave uh, dave Holloway, do you want to just uh, Name somebody and unmute their mic so that uh, they <laughs> good cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, look, Sue, Susie's just joined, so she's not had a chance to share anything anyway. So let me throw her, throw her in at the deep end, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Susie. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry I was a little late. In fact, I joined by watching and listening um, and realised I hadn't actually come into it. I was like <laughs> watching it and hearing you. So, um, yeah, apathy or in peace? And I just, uh, I just feel very much at peace, uh, accepting what is. Um, I can't really quite understand people that are saying that they're so stressed. And I think if you use that word, you put it into your vocabulary, what happens to the mind? People start saying they're stressed, so they start reacting as if they're stressed, whereas if they just sort of accepted what is. And, um, and just take each day as it comes. I think they'll find peace within themselves. I certainly have. In fact, my husband and myself, even though we've been locked down now since the second week in March, are getting on much better than we've ever done. So for you then, to, just to pick up on the question that was uh, asked. Yeah. What, what is the difference between the two, apathy and peace? Because on the surface, they can seem very alike, but what, what for you, what are the key differences? Um, I think if you have apathy, you have understanding, don't you? That's, it is, um, like you said, don't, uh, don't be sympathetic with someone because you can go into their emotion. If you have, apathy for them you understand it but you don't get drawn into it if uh, okay. i'm understanding that correctly i can't remember <laughs> uh, okay i, I think uh, uh, what you're explaining possibly sympathy rather than apathy so a uh, 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 difference between apathy which is the lower state of energy and peace which is the higher yeah energy. so when you experience them uh, uh, is there any uh, kind of noticeable difference that you have between the two and uh, if you need a bit of time to think about that, we can come back to you. I think I probably do because I've only just yeah. joined. <laughs> I fell asleep on the back patio yeah. in the sunshine, so I am sorry. That's all right. Uh, Dave, who's next? Uh, who are you going <laughs> to? <laughs> <laughs> who's next? All right. Um, Keith, what, do you, what, what, what would you say is the difference between peace and apathy? If you'll unmute because you're so, not doing it from our end. I'll do it, right. Uh, well, for me, peace is when you accept everything and you're above the line, your energy is higher. Apathy is when you're accepting it, but you're not happy with it. And so you're doing, you're going along with things because, but you're not happy about it. So like being in a job that you're not happy with and just going along with it for the sake of it. So you're in a really low energy and you just, but you're still going along and doing it. And because you've accepted that's how it is, You've accepted something you're not really happy with. You're in the low energy with it. That's just how I feel about it. Okay, thank you. Dave, thanks. <laughs> um, buddy, how do you uh, differentiate between peace and apathy? But you're not unmuting from my end. Can you unmute yourself? Thanks. Okay. So, my English is not great, by the way, but my understanding of apathy, and I guess that each word would differ to each person, but is, is not caring. Not, not, not caring about what's, what, what's happening. Just, well, peace is being at peace and accepting it, whatever it is. There's a, there's a difference, there's a detachment for somebody who's apathetic is detached. Um, but somebody who's accepting is attached in, well, attached, in other words, maybe attached is the wrong word, is connected. So somebody who's apathetic is disconnecting himself, um, living in the illusion that things are not happening, or if they happen, whatever happens, it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter, that sort of thing. Uh, as opposed to peace, which is just accepting whatever the good or bad, and enjoying it almost um living it accepting it just letting it happen knowing that it will pass whatever it is that's it really okay. uh, well i have one more person uh, just oh. 
Zoe. Zoe's putting her hand up, so we'll come across to Zoe. Hi. Um, I think the way to tell is the amount of energy that you've got. In apathy, there's no energy, there's no movement, there's can't be bothered, why bother, all that almost like non-movement. Whereas in um, peace, there you can be at peace with something but still have a lot of forward motion to change or to whatever, even though you're accepting the situation where it is, there's generally um, more get up and go <laughs> with it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, th thank you for all the people that have just shared it. It is all of those things mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, may maybe a bit more. Uh, Nikki, you just got your hand up, so let me bring you uh, on first. Yes, Nikki. Can you, can you, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just thinking I was putting the thumbs up really just to say, yeah, you know, it, it's a choice, isn't it, that you make. You, you, you can, as I've been saying, you can choose to be peaceful with the situation or you can just um, not bother with it not, or, or not bother with anything. Just, just feel, be a victim. I think that's the thing. If you're apathetic, you've become the victim. But if you're peace you've actually taken control of the situation um i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> um but, but yeah. that's how that's how i view it it's, it's actually a choice you can you can choose to be at peace and accept things or you can just choose to be the, the victim and let it all happen to you like it's um there's nothing that you can do Thank you. And, and again, you just added to what uh, others have said. So that if I can just summarize uh, from my point of view, uh, it, it is uh, apathy is this low state of energy where you are so low in energy uh, that nothing's happening. Everything takes a real effort to, just to get moving, just to get out of bed in the morning it is an effort because you literally don't have the energy to do anything. And it's that state of, well, it's not going to work anyway, so why bother? Why, why bother getting started if it's not going to work anyway? Uh, and it's a place of really kind of uh, um, feeling like a victim, uh, as somebody said. You know, it, it, you, you feel like life is just happening to you. You're not in control of uh, anything, and you know, even if you were, it still wouldn't work out. So what's the point? So it, life is happening to you rather than. Uh, something that you engage with it's uh, something that's imposed on you all these circumstances are imposed on you from the outside and it's just a real battle uh, to do anything so literally in the apathetic stage the body is shutting down and uh, it's struggling uh, to get anything uh, going so th that's apathy peace is at the opposite end of the scale uh, so apathy, which characterizes um, having very little or no energy, peace characterizes having an abundance of energy. You have more energy in the system, in the body, than you actually need. So you never run out because there's always an abundance of energy. And it can be mistaken for apathy because you can also appear very still in peace, but you're still full of energy in that stillness. So uh, in apathy, there is no energy. In peace, there's an abundance of energy. In language, the, the language of apathy is, I don't care what happens. The language of peace is, I don't mind what happens. Uh, and I don't care and I don't mind are different uh, ways of accepting uh, the, the situation. Uh, so those are some of the characteristics. So if I come back to Dave Morris, Dave, does that answer uh, the initial question that you asked? Does it give you a better insight between the two or is there something that we haven't covered yet? No, it's very good. It, it's, it's pretty much where we got to on the buddy call. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I laughed when um, I heard the comments about you're in a job and you don't really want to be in that job, but you keep going. I had, I had a, a secret Santa one year, they bought me a book called I Can't Be Asked. <laughs> and I suddenly realized that was my stock phrase at work. And it was at that point I decided I had to no longer have a job. <laughs> so yes, it does. I see it as being in the moment, 
being accepting of what the situation is and as you say then the energy then allows you to, to take whatever action you want to take or not take and that it's that choice that i think is the is the really powerful thing uh, and uh, that's another good distinction because in apathy you feel like you have no choice everything is just happening to you whereas in peace uh, you're in that place where you do know that you have a choice uh, and uh, what happens is dependent on the choices that you make uh, that and I think uh, uh, Keith said something about that earlier on uh, as well so th those are the kind of the, the two extremes of emotion that on the surface to somebody looking in from the outside can look very similar but internally they're very different in, in the way that they appear and apathetic people are also people who are generally kind of depressed and low in energy and uh, they don't really have a lot of people around them because people don't like being around them because all of the energy is sucked out of them whereas the peaceful people are people uh, where that other people flock to because there's an abundance of energy about these people there, there's a liveliness about them that they can't always explain but it's there uh, and so they feel uh, attracted and gravitate towards those people as well because as humans we instinctively know when somebody is hard work to be around they're actually sucking energy out of us and somebody who's very easy to be around because they're actually emanating a lot of energy that we can also uh, utilize as well uh, so uh, Keith you've got your hand up so uh, just come over to you yeah that's what it feels like at work at the moment is just you just feel that you, the energy is being sucked out of you by the, the attitudes of the people around me and Again, some of the comments I've had this week about from the people at work, um, I'm just thinking, do I want this? You know, and the uh, answer's not okay. really. Okay, so so you're not really thinking it. You got your answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do from that answer? Well, I'm seeing what happens on Monday, but my gut feeling is I want to follow what I want to do, which is get involved with coaching, helping people, and possibly get into property or project managing in some way. Um, so... And would you have the time to do that uh, whilst you also have that job? Um, that I've got to think about. I don't know. Because I don't, I've got to think about what's it going to be, how much commitment and time do I want to invest into doing either property or coaching or something like that. Um, if I can earn money from it or allow money to come in from somewhere so I can do that, hmm. um, then I'd do that and not do the job. So on my screen, you're sitting next to Dave Morris. I suggest you to have a call because <laughs> I can give you some very direct, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know whether it's a sharing advice or experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll let actually very, very briefly Dave tell his story because uh, you were faced with a similar situation. You, you had a job uh, which you didn't particularly enjoy. And when we met, uh, I think, I don't know whether you'd already decided that you needed to be out of it, but you were close to it if you hadn't decided. So, uh, what, what would you, uh, what, from what Keith shared, <laughs> uh, kind of uh, um, maybe in a very quick one-liner advice on that, but uh, what I suggest is have a chat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, you, might be able to, you, know, you might be able to help Keith. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a big decision to make, um, but you'll make the right one. And, you know, if I can help you, and there's lots of others in this group who are property people. So if that's the one route you want to go, there's loads of help here. Uh, and that, that, that means keep actually asking for it <laughs> rather than waiting for it to uh, come to you and wondering why nobody's helping you. That's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm asking for help. I'm saying, help me, please. Oh, man. I, I'm open to it. I've just oh, said it. Help me, please. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm open. So, so set up some conversations off the back of this, contact people and uh, actually have a conversation about yeah. uh, how they've got into it and what it, it took, uh, uh, you know, what, what, what's the reality mm -hmm. compared to the, the image uh, that they had when they started. Yeah. And uh, the, the, as, as uh, Dave shared, there, there are lots of people within our community uh, who can help you uh, specifically uh, with the property side of it and also with the coaching side of it. There, you know, there are many of us who are involved uh, in that side of it uh, as well. Cool. 
and uh, I, I can certainly make feedback about coaching. I, I can't feedback as much about property, but uh, uh, they're, they're, they're both uh, areas in which people can go into, and they're, they're both, I would say, good areas for people to go into as well. Yeah. So, so thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Uh, do you have a question, comment uh, around uh, what we've discussed uh, around peace and apathy, or anything else at all that you yeah. would like some help? Sanjay. Uh, uh, who's that? Me. John. Who's me? Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I'm me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> you just look still on screen. I was waiting to see hands waving. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think Susie also had Susie, a, yeah. a little come over to Susie after uh, John. Yeah, sorry. It's one of the points that, you, you, that I remember you making, which has always really stuck with me, because um, when we talk about peace, there's, there's, there's sometimes a tendency to picture the kind of hippie, groovy man, that sort of image of peace. And I remember you describing peace actually as, as white light, but basically when you are in peace, it's not a question of feeling nothing, which is far more, what would be far more associated with apathy, with apathy. But when you're in peace, you feel everything. So you're fully alive, you're fully energized, but it passes through you, it doesn't affect you. So you just let things come and go. So again, I think that's a really important distinction for people. When you are at peace, you are feeling everything. You are fully alive. So, yeah, thank, thank you. It, it is a great one, and uh, I uh, might already be described. I can't remember on this conference, but uh, uh, peace is uh, li like the white light, whereas all the other emotions, are apathy onwards, all the way up to peace, are like the colours of the rainbow. Whereas peace encompasses everything. So all the other emotions what make up peace so uh, i know i described a few weeks ago uh, uh peace in, in the terms this raging peace and uh, a couple of people came back and said, what do you mean raging peace it's surely that's a contradiction and no it's not because you can have that energy flow through you and be raging and still peaceful at the same time so the energy from the outside can look like rage but it's not internally uh, or it could be any other uh, emotion uh, so it is a really good distinction to remember that peace doesn't look in any shape or form the way you think it should look or the way you've been told it looks. Uh, it, it encompasses everything. But in that state of peace, you're not being affected by anything because it just flows through and passes. So you don't suffer whilst it's happening. I uh, hope, hope that helps for people uh, because it, it, peace is an active state, apathy is a passive state. So th that's another uh, kind of uh, distinction uh, to make. Um, Susie, uh, coming over to you because you had your hand up. Yes, um, as I said to you, my sincerest apologies. I had actually just um, woken up from sitting on the back patio. Um, I was getting very mixed up. I was thinking of empathy, but of course you had mentioned apathy, so that's why possibly I sounded a bit of a nutter at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree with what John's just said. Yeah, peace does, act, and I'm starting to feel that so much more, Sanjay, is that it, it comes and goes, and it doesn't actually, it doesn't, it's not like a surge or anything, it, it's just a calmness within, that it just flows if that makes sense. Uh, yes, uh, I think the key thing that you said is, is it flows, it's something that's passing through. Yeah. And, uh, um, whereas in apathy, there's no sense of anything happening. There's a feeling yeah. of deadness. Yes. As opposed to life. Uh, yeah. So who else? Is there anything you would like to bring up, discuss uh, that, that you've been struggling with or uh, would like help with or you know somebody else who's going through it and I can also see Anna has joined us. Uh, Anna, uh, you can say hi on the mic or you can come on to the video as well. Hello Anna, are you there? Uh, hi, yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm multitasking, doing other bits, um, but wanted to listen in, so I'm here listening to what okay. people say. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, who else? Uh, Susan, would you like to share your kind of 
take on this because uh, uh, I know uh, you know uh, you had some pretty interesting experiences in life. So what, what what's your kind of take on what we've been discussing between apathy and uh, peace? Yeah. Mm. Well, anyone you meet with apathy, it's like a darkness and it's stagnant. So there's no, nothing moving. There's no really any enthusiasm to do anything. And it is, it's, it's very difficult even to have a conversation with somebody that's deep in apathy. When, and, and an awful lot, we we're talking about the, the energy scale of emotion. Just now there's a lot of anger going around, which is, you know, further up in the apathy, is that people are angry that their options have been taken away from them and they've got to conform. So again, I would say that we're, we're getting more people in the angry state and they're rebelling, they're, they're uh, going out to the country and having picnics and they're trying to, you know, hold on to that piece of themselves. Peace is, um, it's like an internal joy, I would say as well, that you hear more of it, everything's clearer. You hear the birds sing, you know, you smell the flowers, you enjoy the sunshine better. And yeah, you will have days because it's human nature, you know, if we listen to all the NHS workers that can't get, you know, the protective gear, you know, there's part of us has compassion for that. And, you know, but you can still be in peace about it. On health matters, when you're, you're in apathy, you're more prone to, to have infections. Your immune system's greatly affected. Uh, when your immune system's inf affected, then you are going to be more susceptible to anything that's going around. When your energy is high and your vibration is high, th there's that place where there can be tons of viruses going around and they won't affect you. I'm not saying that you'll be 100% clear, but when your vibration is high, your health is, is much, much better on all levels. You're producing better chemicals. Your immunology is, is greater. So to me, for clients that I've worked with, you know, is, is use the time to, to listen to meditations is, is to do things that are going to bring your your energy levels up. That would be my advice. Does that help? Uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, one of the things I know from the work I do, and I meet people sometimes who are in apathy, is my first aim is to make them angry because being angry is better than being apathetic. There's more energy to actually get up and do something. Uh, as well so there's no right or wrong with these energies it's just noticing whether they're serving you or not and uh, if they're not what is the higher energy you can go into that will serve you better and in times of illness uh, the, the higher the energy you can get in the quicker you come out uh, and recover as well so even if you do get an infection chances of recovery oh, no. are much greater when you tap into the higher energies I was going to say, you're very good at making people angry when you want, Sanj. <laughs> I've had lots of practice. <laughs> it doesn't take much with me. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't take much to make you angry. So <laughs> uh, yeah, between us, I think uh, we could probably teach people a lot about anger. <laughs> but then I think Susan would probably wipe the floor with both of us, because <laughs> I've seen her work with angry people uh, as well <laughs> and raise her energy. Uh, so, uh, anything else at all? Uh, we've got a few points. We've got in about another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, that, uh, um, uh, if there's anything you would like. Can to I uh, just share something? Yeah, I, sure. I was reading this last night, and it just seems to fit in with what we've been talking about and what you've just been saying and what John was saying about the, the, the white light of everything. It's, uh, what, what do human beings look like to you, Emmanuel? When I see a soul, I see light, crystalline, 
pure, expanded and very beautiful. When I see a human being, I see the very same soul, often cramped, struggling beneath an overlay of various diminishing hues that cause the brilliance to remain entrapped in the more opaque, auric qualities. Beneath, of course, is the true light of God in each soul. And when I view you with my love, I see that light very much as you, or as you do, when you view each other with love. Would you like to know the colours of doubt and fear? I'll begin with the darkest colour, which is the denial of God. Hate, the absence of love, and that is a very dark blackness. It is an illusion, but a deep and dense illusion at times. Fear can be seen not only as the emotion itself, which is a closing down, a greyness, but also when connected to accompanying rage, it can be a scream of most intense and unpleasant sulphurous yellow. Passion, in whatever manifestation, is various shades of red. Intellect is often yellow, and when it is being used for positive purposes, it is golden, golden buttery yellow. When used to deny the heart, then it can become a denser form of the same colour. Green is healing, the healing that is taking place within the body or longing to heal others, which is often commingled with a soft pink, which is love, human love. Love of God glows white. Silver is communication speaking. When it is speaking truth, it has a brilliance and a sparkle. When it is denying truth or used manipulatively, it becomes grey steel. Blue is a most radiant beam when it is connected to expanding spirituality or to the empathic relationship between human beings. There is also a deeper blue, every bit as clear and beautiful as it reflects the deep emotions within yourselves when, you're in, when you are in direct and truthful communication with your own inner being. Lavender, purple, these are the colours of spirit. Often, though not necessarily, spirit guides are seen to wear these colours when they first appear to you. Gold is God's love, given to the world through your willingness and your commitment to the works of such a calling. I see you all as rainbows. I just thought that seemed to sum up a lot of what's just been said this afternoon. Can I say something? I was dying for you to say something, Susan. <laughs> I think you would have <laughs> that so yeah, I used to have um, what was called an aura, an interactive aura station. You're, you've been on it, Sanjay, haven't you? Yeah. Mm. Um, a very piece of high-tech equipment where you put your hand on a hand sensor and what would come up would be your colours of your aura. And I used to relate that to people's health and well-being. And, you know, we are, we're, we're energy in motion and just like the rainbow, you know, it's, it's the different vibrations that we're, we're experiencing. But when people were low or when they had a blockage, the, the stagnant energy within that uh, aura station, that you, you actually saw it in motion, it was dark and it was heavy. And that really was where they used to have the pain or it could be they could have a problem with their liver or their kidney or digestive system. But when they, they were getting healing or when they were in meditation or when a shift happened, you would see that disperse and the colours starting to come in. And that's when you knew that what we can call is healing, that the energy was starting to move again and then they felt more alive. So all the colours that you were, you were explaining, yeah, as you go through the chakras, which anybody doesn't, doesn't know, is the energy centres. We all vibrate at the different frequencies. So the reds can be passion, enthusiasm for life. Um, the yellows, again, are associated with the digestive system. But again, it's inspiration, it's intellect. Uh, the the colours are amazing. But the white is, it is it's pure spirit, which we all are. And we all radiate it at some level. And so, yeah, we're... It, Use this time, nature's a great place to be able to raise your energy levels, is get your energy levels up high. You know, let your colours shine and be the rainbow. And that's not an advert for Skittles. 
just be the rainbow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, it, it, this is very unusual and uh, 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 entirely up to you, Susan, but uh, uh, I take my cue of what uh, kind of I feel. And the, there are two people sitting right next to you on my screen that I think would benefit from just having a chat with you for completely different reasons. And they might be surprised by this, but uh, I'm gonna go with my instinct and uh, if, if you can contact each other through the forum or just ask uh, me. Uh, but uh, first, if I can have your permission, Susan, just to put them in touch with you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So first one is Anna and the second one is Natalie. Have a chat with Susan and... Uh, yeah, but I don't see them on my screen. Uh, okay, so um, you, you can connect through Zoom or uh, in a Skype or whatever, but uh, uh, take the opportunity to have a chat because um, you might learn a few things which will help you both uh, on your journeys. Uh, and uh, that, that's all I'm going to say around this <laughs> on that. But uh, I, I've had huge help from Susan over the years, and uh, um, it, 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 I mean, I remember first meeting you. It was under protest that I was brought to your house. <laughs> I was told I will be seeing you. <laughs> it's the best thing that happened, really. I remember the first time I met you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of you have kind of seen some of the uh, far walking pictures, and there's one that's. Uh, uh, with a far walk with a lake in the background and that, that was one that uh, uh, Susan arranged up in Scotland and it, it was one of the most spectacular places to hold a far walk <laughs> as well as a glorious uh, day like today and uh, evening and uh, uh, those of you that have heard to me talk about uh, the fire going out and uh, uh, I could see through the window and uh, Mick waving a door, literally a door uh, to try and get it <laughs> going that's the one that that was up in Scotland uh, on there. So um, we are coming up to eight minutes. Do you any final questions, comments from anybody uh, that uh, uh, you have? Uh, Alison, I've just seen you come on the screen. Uh, would you like to say anything? Um, no, I have been listening, but um, I've been cleaning the holiday let, so I've been on video or uh, turn my video off. So. Uh, I've been busy, but I've been listening to the call. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, uh, anybody else? Any final comments before we finish? No? Uh, everybody happy? Okay, good. So um, over to you, John or Dave for any final comments? John John's got something to Oh, Nikki, Nikki's got a hand up. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Hi. Hi, sorry. I was just I was just trying to find the, the right thing to, to press then. Um, I was just going to ask Dave, is there any chance, I know it's a long poem you've just read out, but could you post that somewhere? Yes, I could. Because I'd love to have a, I'd love to have a copy, you know, that's so I could actually really look at it and read it properly. Yes, of course. If you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be great. We'll put it up on the forum. Thank you. Thank you. Right, John's got something to say. Well, you can't unmute. There you go, mate. Um, no, it was it was just it struck me again that um, I suppose more with these Sunday afternoon calls than anything else, although it can happen on any of them. That we kind of come on and, and uh, we literally no agenda at all, other than hoping that that some of the people might turn up and join us because conversations between the three of us get mighty boring, at least for me. Um, and what a beautiful hour we've just had. Um, certainly I, I feel that my energy is higher now than it was uh, when we started and just to you know that thanks to Dave Morris for that really just that one little thing that sets us off on, on, on the subject and uh, really really enjoyed it this afternoon so thank you all for for joining us it's really been good so that's all for me. Thank you John. Um, I would just isn't synchronicity a wonderful thing? However it, however it manifests, whatever happens, synchronicity, coincidence, whatever you want to call it. Um, as I said, halfway through the call, I suddenly thought, oh, I was reading about this last night. 
I wasn't sitting here thinking, oh, this is my opportunity to read a bit of my book, but it fitted. It, it worked. It, it, to me, it just felt the right thing. Um, so, yeah, synchronicity. How wonderful. So where else is there synchronicity and what's happening at the moment? What is this? What is all this? What's it leading to? It's um, strange but exciting times, I think, is, is my take on things at the moment. Thank you all very much. It's, again, it's uh, a great opportunity to share things. Yes, thank you all very much and uh, uh, look forward to seeing uh, all of you again at a future date. And uh, in the me meantime, take care and go out, go enjoy the weather. It is glorious out there and uh, we shall speak again soon. So uh, that's uh, uh, bye from me. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot.